going to do a little bit of forensics here and show you how I found Hillary Clinton's email. So in Google, I did some searching and I found that her email server, her email address is going to be clintonemail.com. Now we know there's several different uh, options here. There's HDR 22, which could mean uh, her her initials using her maiden name, etc., and some some other information. But we do know the important thing is that it's ClintonEmail.com. Now I'm not going to do anything illegal here, so let's just go ahead and see what information we can find out without actually breaking the law. See how far we can go. So the first thing we want to do is check out and see if it's an Exchange server. Now typically Exchange servers are going to start with https colon slash slash mail most people use mail for that clinton email.com and it always ends up with owa at the end which is for outlook web access and there it is there's the login to hillary clinton's email server now let's find out some more information such as uh what email uh that, or what type of spam filter she uses. You know, how do we get the email to her? Does she even have a spam filter? So we're going to go to a website called alltechtools.com and we're going to click on the DNS tools area. From here, we're going to click on DNS lookup and we'll put in clintonemail.com. And from here, we'll click on MX. Now, MX is the mail exchange record. This is where the email gets delivered. So if you click lookup, we can see that the email is getting delivered to clintonemail.com.inbound10.mxlogic.mx.net. So MX Logic is a spam filtering service. So we know that her email is no longer going directly to the server. It may have done that at one point, but it's definitely not doing that now. It's actually being hosted by a fairly secure MX Logic server. So let's just go ahead and copy that because we're going to do that, use that a little bit later. So we'll paste that into our notepad. All right, so let's take a look and see where this website is going. So let's put in mail.clintonemail.com. And we're going to change from the MX type of record to the A record. This is just basically a forward lookup. It says this is the name and what is the IP address. So it is 6494172146. So let's go ahead and copy that. And we'll paste it into our notepad. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our who is search. So if you want to find out information about who owns an IP address, you go to Aaron.net. Now, Aaron is the American Registry of Internet Numbers, and they assign the IP addresses to everybody in America. So let's just go ahead and paste that IP address in, and we can take a look, see if we get any information off of this. Oh, it says it's a private customer. And they're not going to give any more information about than that, other than that it was registered in California, Redondo Beach. And that is all we're going to get out of it. It also shows the point of contact is in Atlanta, Georgia. It doesn't necessarily mean that the IP address is in Georgia, but it does give that information. So let's take a look at some more information. We're going to go to this other website, and it's called iptrackeronline.com. And you're going to enter the IP address that you want to put in there. So we'll go back here and make sure we have this copied OK. And we will paste it into our tracker. Click Submit and see where it is. So according to this, the server is located somewhere in New York. Now it shows here someplace on 3rd Avenue, uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the exact location, but it certainly could be could be a data center in one of these buildings here. So let's take a look again at the mail server itself. So we're at the Outlook web app login. Now I know for a fact that this is, from experience being an IT administrator, this is Exchange 2010. Now currently we are on Exchange 2016, so there was a 2013 in between. So this server is using a couple of versions back, but according to Microsoft's website, they still support Exchange 2010, so it can be fully secured despite the fact it is an older version of Microsoft Exchange. Let's go back to our MX record locator, 
which is the MX Logic. And let's just take a look and see how secure this is. So we'll go to a command prompt and we'll type the Telnet command. So Telnet allows us to uh, connect using a socket. In this case, it's basically like a doorway, a doorway into a network. And it only works with TCP connections because those are connection oriented. So from here, we'll go to Telnet. We'll put in where her email server is inbound receiving email and we'll put in port 25. So what port 25 is, is the SMTP or simple mail transport protocol that allows us to connect and send email. Now there's more than port 25 out there. That's just one of the ones that's there. So let's go ahead and hit enter and see if we connect. And the answer is that we cannot. However, I do know that this is a Comcast home connection and you cannot connect out to port 25 because they don't want spam going out from people's infected home computers. But that's okay because I have another internet connection going to another location. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the Telnet command, paste in our name again and put in 25. And look at that, I connect. Now that doesn't necessarily mean anything is insecure unless we are able to connect using the H-E-L-O command. So we put in H-E-L-O and then we put in the information here and we hit enter and it says command not implemented. Let's try another one. Let's try the H-E-L-O Clinton email dot com command not implemented. So that's good. That means that this particular spam filter that is run by MX Logic and is connected to Clinton's email is secure. So clearly it's no longer being hosted in someone's bathroom like it was at one time allegedly. It's now being hosted at a data center in New York and it has a an MX Logic which is a very high-end spam filter company and it is protecting it and it has not put it in the default way. It is now very secure. So I can connect to it as far as being able to send an email to it, but I can no longer use what I normally would be able to do, which is a dictionary attack to try to hack into the mail server. So it's much, much less likely to be hacked than it was when it was in the other location. So a lot of people are wondering, why is it that I could, uh, or somebody could connect to uh, her mail server and hack her email? Well, that's pretty simple. In the default type of configuration, you're able to connect on port 220, you're able to run these H-E-L-O commands, and you're able to start guessing usernames, passwords, email addresses, and things like that, and it doesn't stop you from doing it. However, since that time, someone has done the right thing and has has configured it securely, which is very good. So I don't think we have to worry, except by social engineering, I don't think we have to worry at this point that uh, Hillary Clinton's email could be hacked very easily uh, in the near future. So just to summarize, everything that I found today was publicly available on the internet. I did not try to hack anything. I did not try to steal anything. I just tried to show what is available within just a few minutes, how you can check out uh, what a person's mail server is or a person's information and uh, possibly deduce that information to be able to hack into a server. So this is what the hackers in Russia and China have been doing. And this is one of the ways that they get into it. But the good news is is that going forward, they probably will not be able to get it unless they socially engineer an attack by calling somebody up and pretending to be somebody they're not and getting information that way. So I don't recommend anyone does anything to break the law. And this just gives you an idea of how people do security uh, in IT.